Giriyamma, who had stunned Sri Sumatindra and Gopaladasa. Sri Sumatindra was being accorded a grand welcome at the entry point to Malebannur during his Yatra. A group of persons was waiting there at that time with the deliberate intent of telling the disciples and the staff of the mud certain calumnious things about a woman of that place. The woman was known by the name Giriyamma in that village. Her family members and most residents of the place were not in any manner ours to whatever she did, but a few felt otherwise about those. The reason being that she was a woman. Sri Sumatindra, after accepting Pada Puja, was getting ready to perform the Moolurama Puja. A few persons, ignorant of things, were opposing the very presence of Giriyama in the Mantapa. Persons like you should not step into this area nor witness the puja, they said. I shall stand in a corner and after having darshan, leave this place, she said. Though she was the one privileged to sit in the front row and witness that day's puja. Yet that small group of persons told her curtly, It's not possible to permit you. There may be problems arising due to that. Please go away. Nothing will crop up. I must witness the puja. Don't prevent me, she retorted loudly to attract the attention of others. In the meanwhile, a few voices raised in support of her silenced the antagonistic group. The members of that unkindly group then told her dejectedly, All right, stand aloof in the end row and witness the puja from there. The Samstana puja took place in a grand style that day and Giriyama was watching it from a corner, far away from the mantapa. An, an aide of the Swami then announced that the person who had arranged for the bhiksha that day be called there for receiving the tirtha. The organizers in instantly called aloud, Where is Giriyama? Please come here at once. Swami is waiting for you. On hearing that, the opponent group was left speechless, mulling. We had objected to Giriyama seeing the puja. We were not aware that she was the one who had paid for today's bhiksha. At least Giriyama could have informed this to us. They then exchanged among themselves their reflection that the organizers were thoughtless in collecting contributions from all and sundry. Even now it's not late. We shall appraise the Swami everything. They decided and hastened towards the Puja Mandapa. Swami Giriyama who has arranged for the Bhiksha today is not a person suited to receive Tita from your holiness. The group of persons submitted to the pontiff. pontiff. Why do you say so? Please. She is a barren woman and besides does not matter. Ask her to come observed Sri Sumatindra. Giriyamma came there hesitantly and after paying her obeisance to the Swami extended her hand in great veneration and in a humble demeanor to receive the holy water from the pontiff. But Sri Sumatindra was momentarily taken aback when he saw the hand of Giriyamma extended before him. He then closed his eyes and meditated for a minute getting divine enlightenment by that exercise. He was later thinking whether he could tell the assemblage of what he had known. The staff of the mat, realizing that the Swami was wanting to tell something, utilized that opportunity to inform him in a whisper what some persons at the entrance to the village had told them about Giriyama in a deprecatory manner. Is it so? Tomorrow morning I shall reveal everything during the Mudra Dharana, branding of the religious marks. Presently let us get on with what remains to be done now. The Swami told his disciples in a low tone, asking them to make suitable as announcement. Following that, when he was giving Tita, the Swami observed Giriyama's palm once more and let out a deep breath. And before knowing what happened on the morrow, let us delve into the background of Giriyama and why some people were talking derogatorily about her. Rane Bennur is now a small town in the Haveri district of Karnataka. Long ago, one Bishtappa was a village accountant there. 
he was a very devout person and daily he and his spouse were praying to the almighty for an offspring of good attributes proximate to rani benur was male benur and near that place was a lake known by the name halavana katte helavana katte on the bank of that lake was a shrine for sri ranganatha swami earlier the ranganatha swami idol of the temple had remained concealed under the earth for centuries one day an ant hill appeared at that place in no time strangely a cow was coming there daily and draining off its milk on the ant hill it was one aruna who had seen this queer happening he was always in meditation there as his thighs were not of normal growth a physical deformity that he was suffering from it was when he came back to his usual state of mental awareness that aruna saw the bizarre sight of a cow emptying the contents of its udder into the ant hill there aroused by curiosity aruna disturbed the ant hill and lo a lovely ranganatha swami idol below the ground level could be espied there aruna took it out installed it on the bank of the helavanakatte lake and commenced worshiping it as a result of his devotion his thigh muscles started growing and for that significance the place derived its name as pangutirtha the word pangu meaning thigh it was at that powerful ranganatha swami shrine that the bishtapas prayed for progeny as a result a beautiful girl was born to them the child had a bright and radiant face and was singular in its deportment though it could not be made out at that tender age what its distinctiveness was the parents named it as giriamma and brought it up with great joy and a sense of pride its divine touch brought success to others and many came to fondle it for that reason and when the child had grown up a few could sense that she possessed some extraordinary marks on her body as was customary then she was married off at a very young age to one tipparasu giriamma by her exemplary conduct won the praise of everyone in the new household she had entered into whenever people narrated their woes to her she offered counsel to overcome those transmitting the divine guidance she had which solved their problems and effaced the miseries she was soon flooded with offerings made by those seeking her guidance despite her reluctance to accept and accept them as years rolled on her house had an affluence of grains and riches despite such abundance the family members were feeling an emptiness in the house in the absence of a child in their midst but they consoled themselves that the time for it had not arrived yet in due course they fixed an auspicious day for the conjugal union of the young couple however giriamma tactfully appraised her spouse that she was not interested in marital life and a flabbergasted tipparasu conveyed it to the elders in his family but the worldly wise elders felt that being young she was of that outlook and that in course of time she would be inclined to adjust herself to the normal way of life of a married couple came the nuptials day but giriamma was stubborn in her stand and expressed her reluctance to participate in the rituals connected with the auspicious event she felt that her self denial should not jeopardize her husband's happiness in any manner and unhesitatingly told her in-laws you may rather think of another wedlock for your son to continue the lineage stunning everyone the elders did not expect such a reaction from the bride but could sense that there must be some valid reason for her disinclination and therefore refrained from pressing her about the matter giriamma was always affectionate towards her husband and other family members and did all the domestic chores herself at the same time looking after the needs of the aged ones too even with the burden of her routine work weighing heavily on her she would go to the ranganatha swami temple every morning and draw multicolored columns 
flowery designs drawn with rice flower or limestone powder in its sanctum her artistic depictions would be most captivating to the eye transfixing the beholder to the spot with awe while so sri gopal dasa who commanded the power to know the past the present and the future had once come to that place from uddanur in part 7 Certain incidents connected with Gopal Dasa have been presented extensively. When Sri Jagannath Dasa feigned stomach ache, Sri Gopal Dasa from far away Uddanur had pronounced the words "Let it commence," and as a result, the former started suffering from such pain. In reality, he then went to Tirupati, Sholingar, and um, Sholingar and Mantralaya for divine blessings. and when he was thinking of ending his life sri raghavendra prevented it and enlightened him to go to sri vijayadasa when sri vijayadasa was met he was advised to go to gopal dasa at uddanur who prescribed the treatment for the malady as already seen in that volume when sri gopal dasa of such extraordinary prowess of aproksha gana aproksha gnana had come to giriamma's place and seen the rangolis drawn by her he was amazed whether such exquisite designs could have indeed been drawn by a human hand but since he had been endowed with extraordinary spiritual powers he could get enlightenment as to who giriamma was and what the special merits of her hands were the next chapter unfolds what sri sumati indra had known about on seeing the hand of giriamma and what sri gopal dasa had understood from just a look at the rangolis drawn by her